We're going to look at the parable of the weeds. Some call it the wheat and the tares. It's a very good one, a common one. I want to dive into it, get some understanding, allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to me what he wants me to get from it. It's always something new every time I read it. But I also want to challenge you to open up and let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what is the meaning behind this parable. Again, parables are a great way for us to get a little more understanding of what Jesus is trying to tell us, but also a big example of how the grace of God is shown through Jesus, giving us uh, an, an image of, in a way that we can understand of how the kingdom of God is like, or how we should, should operate to give him glory. So we're going to jump into it. We're going to read it all the way through, and then I'm going to pull out some things that I think come to mind. So we're going to read Matthew chapter 13, starting at verse 24. Let's dive in. It says, he presented them with another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a person who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the plant sprouted and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. So the slaves of the owner came in and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Then where did the weeds come from? He said, An enemy has done this. So the slaves replied, Do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, since in gathering the weeds you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned, but then gather the wheat into my barn. All right, well, God, what are you saying? What is, what is the big picture? What are the details? I, I love this. We're going to look at verse 25. We're going to start from the top and then go to the bottom. There's certain things I want to pull out that I want to make known that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me this morning as I looked again um, at this parable. So at verse 25, notice that it says, but while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Look how cowardly the enemy is. And I noticed that it's an enemy. It's not the enemy. We know the devil is the enemy, mostly, you know, pointing to the enemy or, you know, the king of this world. But it's an enemy coming from the devil, working and operating under the authority of evil. But it doesn't necessarily have to be the devil himself. It could be, you know, evil spirits. It could be other people operating or being used by these unclean spirits. Anything that opposes God is an enemy. I want to say that again. If you are imposing God, you are an enemy to God. You are not a friend of God, okay? So an enemy comes and might come and sow seeds of doubt, of deception, of disbelief, of unsound doctrine. That's a big one as well. These are the ways that the enemy comes when you're sleeping, when you're least expected, when you're not focused, when you're not in tune to the Spirit of God. That's when the enemy has an opportunity to come and attack you. The Bible says to don't give the devil any opportunity in the book of Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians. Leave no room for the devil. Right? It's hard. It's easier said than done, but he comes in with opportunities of doubt and covenants that we make, you know, fear. All these different things are ways for him to come in and fill in the gap with his lies. We can't allow that. That's when he comes. That's when he operates. He's a coward. The Bible says that he comes like a roaring lion, right? But notice as he comes like this roaring lion, the Bible talks about how he prowls. Prowling is, is very stealth-like. It's very strategic. We got to pay attention to that and look at the schemes of the enemy. We're not deceived by his schemes. And the Bible tells us that we must be aware of his scheme. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 26 is another one. It's another good one that made me pause and think for a little bit. Again, when the plant sprouted and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. It's at the time when the plants sprout and grow grain. That's when the fruit can be seen. Now, these plants are, are showing fruit, right? It's a fruit from the good seed that was planted. Um, now, you know, the plants are growing, they're thriving, they're bearing fruit, they're operating the way that Jesus wants them to operate, but yet the weeds are now identified. The understanding behind that, what I see is that when you bear fruit, that's when the world can see who you belong to. Who's your father in heaven? Who's your kingdom? Who, who's your king? What kingdom are you from? Who's your ruler? Who's your master? You can't serve two masters, right? So you're going to be able to identify the people that are operating and sowing the good fruit, operating in the spirit versus the world, operating under the kingdom of darkness. That's, that's what it is. It's just two kingdoms. It's just kingdom of light, kingdom of darkness. The fruit that you bear, the evil people do the same thing. They bear their fruit. We're being love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. The enemy is, is bearing hatred, backstabbing, lies, deception, all these things. Look at yourself. Are you operating in the realm of serving the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness? If you are serving the kingdom of darkness by accident, it, 
the grace of God is that when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to purify us. Just turn back. Oh my gosh, you know what? I need to forgive. Lord, help me to forgive. Lord, I, I gossip. Help me to stop gossiping. Whatever it is, whatever it is, those are things that can be identified as the difference between someone that's walking in the fruit of the Spirit, in love, in authority of the kingdom, or operating in the world. We see that both sides grow and coexist together. You know, Jesus tells us to, you know, in this world you'll have many troubles, but to be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. This is just a ba- another understanding that, hey, you're going to have to live with these people that don't believe the same thing you believe. And that's just the way it is. But our job is to be different from them is to bring them to the awareness of the truth, but also to be different from them, to not sacrifice the truth, but express the truth in love. The, the good plants are identified. The servant comes and says, sir, I thought you scattered good seed. The slave replies, do you want us to gather them? Do you want us to go gather them? Talking about the weeds. Do you want me to go take care of this? I, these are, I believe, God's holy angels that are going to come from the four corners of the earth to come and and take us, right? Do you want us to come now? They just so quick to serve their God. He says, no, not yet, because in doing so, you might uproot the wheat with the weeds. My wrath is a consuming fire. When I come in my wrath to take care of the weeds in the way that I need to exterminate them, it's going to cause some collateral damage. It's not like I can just do it and then just just kind of back off. Once I do it, I, I do it, and I'm going to do it, you know, God talking at the end during Jacob's trouble, during the tribulation. This is when his wrath is going to come. Let's read that again. At harvest time, I will tell the reapers, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned, but then gather the wheat into my barn. That is just a big example of God's grace. Now, this sounds pretty hard to swallow, but but it's the truth, right? There's going to be an end. There's going to be people that are going to be gathered and going to inter- eternal separation from God. That's just what it is. And it's by their own choice. But I see this more so as evidence of God's grace and his love. And here's why. Because he can easily come. You know, we cry out, God, why why are bad things happening? Why why don't you just come now? You know, I, I I got done wrong. He sees that you're his beloved child. I need you guys to, to pay attention to this. You're his beloved child. You guys watching might have children. I don't have any kids. But I know you will come like a roaring lion in a holy way, not like the devil, to go and save your children, right? A child that you love. How much more does your father in heaven love you? The Bible says he's not slack in his returning. Look at his patience and his waiting for all of us to come to repentance. When I come, it's over. Look at the love that God has for you, but also the love that he has for his unbelieving creation. All right, I don't want to say children because you got to be born into being a child of God. But he still loves them and he's still calling them into repentance. He still made every opportunity to grab them. Look at the long suffering of our Lord. This is why I believe he's causing us to join him in this long suffering. Just hold on a little longer. I always preach endurance. I always preach endurance because I see that all through the Bible. How long, Lord? How long, Lord? Just hold on a little longer. Join me in my love for those unbelieving people and and have your heart break for what my heart breaks. You know, help them to come and see my light just as much as you see my light. Okay, this is what, what I see. is As terrible as it sounds, some people still won't see it. And of course, they're going to be gathered up and burned away. But as the Bible says, I'm convinced the current suffering in this world is nothing compared to the joy that's going to be revealed to us. That is the promise of God. We need, I need you and myself to be reminded of that truth. Whatever you're dealing with right now is nothing in comparison to what will be revealed to you. Okay, so just keep holding on. But let me know what you guys think. Again, thank you. I forget the name of the person that that recommended this um, this teaching, but this is a good one. This is what I'm gathering just today. But again, I gather something new every time I read the Bible, every time I read uh, the parables. So let me know what what you think. What what are you guys gathering from the parable of the weeds? I'm very curious about it. And let me know what recommendation you have for for any new ones. I love you guys. I appreciate all your support. Definitely, thank you for watching all the way through. That that helps a lot. That gets kind of the algorithm going. I appreciate all the likes as well and, and all you guys subscribing. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm super humbled by it. Okay, take care.